In the previous video, we discussed some special strategies for reading part 3. In this video, we're going to talk about some strategies that will help you in part 4 of the reading test. Okay, in reading part 4, reading for viewpoints, where should you begin? Well, before starting to read anything, you should quickly preview the entire part. Here's an example to show you what I mean. First, there will always be a timer like this at the top of the screen. So I've got 13 minutes for this part. And how about the number of questions? Notice that I've got 10 questions here. The first five are about the reading passage on the left, and then I've got another five questions where I've got to fill in the blanks in a response paragraph. So I've got a total of 13 minutes for 10 questions. That means I've got just over a minute for each question. But you should keep in mind that reading part 4 is often the most difficult reading part, and it's likely that you won't have time to both read the entire passage and answer the questions. Hmm, in that case, what should you do? I briefly mentioned the concepts of skimming and scanning in a previous video. Now I'm going to show how useful these both can be. But before we begin, I want to emphasize that reading part 4 typically contains a complex topic with multiple points of view. So try to keep this in mind while you go through the passage. When you skim a passage of text, you read over it very quickly, keeping an eye out for the main ideas. To begin, I should skim the first, or topic, sentence of each paragraph to get a general idea of the topic. The first paragraph seems to be about how expensive it is to remove snow from the sidewalks of many Canadian cities. The second paragraph discusses the opinion of an engineer, Annie Drapeau. Remember any names you see, they might come in useful later. The third paragraph discusses heated sidewalks. Uh -huh. Maybe this is a method of snow removal. And the fourth paragraph talks about how some environmentalists claim that this added heat, hmm, added heat maybe from the heated sidewalks, will speed up global warming. Okay, now let's go through it one more time and look for names. In reading part four, it's likely that people mentioned in the text will have opinions about the topic being discussed. This time, we're going to practice scanning. Scanning is when you look for keywords and specific pieces of information in the text. In this case, we're scanning for names. Just don't spend too much time on this. No more than a couple of minutes, tops. The capital letters in names often make them easy to pick out. And look out for quotation marks as well. These often indicate that someone is stating their viewpoint on the topic. Okay, in the first paragraph, I see a reporter named James Williams. And I see some quotation marks. It looks like he's predicting that Canadian cities may have heated sidewalks in a few years. In the second paragraph, as I've already noted, the engineer Annie Drapeau is talking about the convenience of heated sidewalks. Drapeau is mentioned again in the third paragraph, where she discusses some additional benefits of these sidewalks. In the final paragraph, I see that Alice Barnett claims that heated sidewalks will contribute to global warming. She's likely an environmentalist. I also see Pauline Morrow, who lives in Hamilton, talk about how heated sidewalks are a waste of money. And it looks like James Williams is mentioned again at the very end. Okay, so after a bit of skimming and scanning, I can tell that this topic is about the various opinions surrounding the use of heated sidewalks in Canadian cities. The reporter James Williams and the engineer Annie Drapeau seem to support this idea, but the environmentalist Alice Barnett and the Hamilton resident Pauline Morrow are less enthusiastic about it. And just one more reminder, you'll likely find that skimming and scanning the text before you begin especially in reading part 4, will really help you with the questions. But don't take more than a couple of minutes on this before you actually start answering the questions. And speaking of which, let's try a question from the first section. The person anticipating Canada's imminent use of heated sidewalks is Barnett, 
the environmentalist, Morrow, the Hamilton resident, Williams, the reporter, Drapeau, the engineer. Okay, so we can cross out Barnett and Morrow, since they're not in favor of the sidewalks. Drapeau does support the use of heated sidewalks. But if you remember the first paragraph, it was actually Williams who predicts that Canadian cities will soon use these sidewalks. He mentions this in his statement, In a few years, Canada will see this dream become a reality. So C is the correct answer. Let's try one more question, this time from the second section. Remember that in reading part 4, the last five questions are blanks in a response to the main passage of text. You've got to answer the questions to correctly complete this response. Here we go. Heated sidewalks are a ridiculous idea. For one thing, the cost is astronomical, and to what end? I call it heating the air, wasting energy, excessive spending, destroying nature, as Morrow suggested. Ah, I know that Morrow was mentioned in the last paragraph, so I'll go there. Here, Morrow asks, why waste our tax dollars when the current system works well enough? So she thinks that heated sidewalks are too expensive. And if the writer of this response agrees with Morrow, then C, excessive spending, must be the correct answer. In this video, we discussed a number of strategies that can prove very useful for reading part 4. Regardless of the topic of this part, there are some things that will always be the same. The time will be 13 minutes, you'll have 10 questions to answer, and the text will be split into a main passage and a short response. And remember that skimming and scanning can be useful for identifying the various viewpoints mentioned in this part. In the next few videos, we'll talk about how to deal with difficult questions on the reading test.